Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a post hoc test after a chi-square test. I will be using these fictitious data loaded in the data editor in SPSS. And I have two categorical variables here. One is named method, and it has three categories. And the other is outcome. It also has three categories. So this will be a three by three chi-square. Taking a look at the method variable, the three levels start with online, then individual, and then group. So let's assume at a counseling agency we have a coping skill that we're trying to teach to clients that volunteer. And we have three delivery methods to teach the coping skills. The first is online, and this would be where a description of the coping skill is typed out on a website and the clients read it. The next is the coping skill taught by a counselor one-on-one. -on -one. So I refer to this as individual. And then the last method is group. So this is where the coping skill is taught in a group format in person by a counselor. In the other variable, the outcome variable, we have rated the impact of the teaching method and that outcome is rated as low, moderate, or high. So a client with a score of low did not learn the coping skill where it can be applied in a meaningful way. In the moderate level, the learning was satisfactory and the high level, the coping skill was learned well and they were able to apply it. So again, we have two categorical variables and three levels for each of these variables. Because the method comes first, and there is a logical reason to believe that the method would have an impact on the outcome, we're going to treat the method variable as a predictor variable and the outcome variable as an outcome variable. So first, I'm going to conduct the chi-square test. I'm gonna to go to Analyze descriptive statistics, and then cross tabs. So I'm going to use the method variable in the row list box because we believe the method is a predictor. It doesn't have to be in the row list box. However, displaying it in this way is more common. So the outcome variable will go in the column list box. Under statistics, I'm going to check off chi-square and click continue. Under cells, I'm going to click expected under counts and under percentages, I'm going to check row. Click continue and then click OK. So we can see from the first table, the case processing summary, we have no missing values. We have a sample size of 90. I'm going to come back to the method times outcome cross tabulation. First going to go down to the chi-square tests table. And we can see here we have the Pearson chi-square and the value of the statistic, 11.1, 4 degrees of freedom, and we have a probability value here of 0 0.025. So we have a statistically significant finding. However, we've conducted nine separate analyses here. So we're not sure for what combination or combinations of these variables we have statistical significance. We just know that overall, we have a statistically significant finding. So we need to conduct a post hoc test to identify the significant difference or differences within this chi-square. So in order to conduct a post hoc test, I'm gonna to go to Analyze. Go to this selection right from the output view, but you can also go back to the data editor. Descriptive statistics and cross tabs. This is the same dialog that was open before. You can see the variables in the row list box and the column list box. And under cells, I'm gonna add under residuals, the adjusted standardized residuals. I'm not gonna make any other changes. Just click continue and then okay. So this output looks similar to the first output. The only difference is we have the adjusted residual below each one of the methods. So an adjusted residual score for each 
combination of method and outcome. This adjusted standardized residual is a z-score, and we know that the z-scores associated with the alpha of 0.05, or 5%, would be negative 1.96 or 1.96. So less than negative 1.96 or greater than 1.96. However, that's before the Bonferroni adjustment. If we evaluate just based on negative 1.96 or 1.96, we are at an increased risk of having a type 1 error. That is, finding a difference when there is no difference. So we don't want to make an interpretation based on these z-scores. We want to convert them to probability values. So before I do that, let's take a look at these data and try to determine where the difference or differences may be. So we have the online level of the method variable and we look at the percent within method. We have 43% for online had a low amount of learning, 33% had a moderate amount of learning, and 23% had a high amount of learning. I'm going to skip down to the group level here of method, come back to individual. You can see group is fairly similar to online. 40% with a low amount of learning, 40% with a moderate amount of learning and 20% with a high amount of learning. The level that stands out here is the individual level of the method variable. In the low learning level we have just 10% with moderate learning 43% and with high amount of learning 46%. So we may suspect a statistically significant difference at the individual level of method and the low level of outcome and perhaps at the individual level of method and the high level of outcome. If you look at individual and moderate we can see the count was 13 and the expected count was 11.7 so they're very close to one another so we would not expect to find significance at that combination, the combination of individual and moderate. So let's take a look now at how to generate the associated probability values. I'm going to demonstrate two ways of doing this. One in Excel, which is a fast and fairly efficient method, and the other using SPSS. And that method will produce the same results. It just takes a little longer to complete. So first I'll demonstrate how to calculate the probability values using Excel. I'm going to right click on this method times outcome cross tabulation and copy and then move over to this empty Excel worksheet and use control V to paste and I'm going to resize this C column and change the row height so this will fit a little better. I'm not going to need the total section at the bottom so I'm just going to delete those rows And I'm also going to remove the lines up here under Home and Font. Take those borders out. Then I'm going to create a new row under each adjusted residual row. So I'll right click here, insert, and then right click here and insert. And there's already an empty row under the last adjusted residual, the one for group. So I want to calculate a new alpha value. And I'm going to do that first. I'm going to use the Bonferroni correction. So it's going to be the alpha value we would normally use, which would be 0.05. I'll input 0.05 and I want to divide it by the number of analyses that I conducted. In this case we had three levels of method and three levels of outcome. So that's nine analyses. So it would be equal sign, alpha, and divided by 9. So the new alpha is 0 0.0055. So then to calculate the probability value associated with each 
adjusted standardized residual. I'm going to move below the adjusted residual value and enter in a function. So the equal sign and the function I'm going to use is chi square distribution right tail. So chisq dot dist dot rt. And this function has two arguments. x and degrees of freedom, which in this case will be 1. So how do we convert the adjusted standardized residual so that we can get the chi-square value? That'll be the adjusted standardized residual, so I'll select that, and we'll just square that. So that's going to be shift 6 for the caret, then 2. So it's that adjusted standardized residual, that z-score, squared. And then comma, degrees of freedom, is equal to 1. So we can see that we only have one digit to the right of the decimal displayed here. So I can change that up in the home ribbon under number, and then I'll auto-fill that to the right. And we have the probability values associated with these three adjusted standardized residuals. Control C on cell D8. And I can just paste this with Control V into D13 and D18 and autofill for the other levels of the outcome variable. So here we have nine probability values. And I'll highlight these. They stand out a little more. And we want to evaluate these probability values against the adjusted alpha, the alpha where I use the Bonferroni correction. So instead of 0 0.05, it's 0 0.0055. And we can see there was only one count that has a statistically significant finding. That's the individual level and the low level. There were three clients that had a counselor teach them the coping skill individually and had a low learning outcome. The expected count was 9.3. And we can see here the probability value 0 0.002, lower than 0 0.005. The high amount of learning for the same level of the independent variable method, the individual level, was another area that looked like it could be statistically significant. However, this finding, 0 0.01, is greater than 0 0.005, is not statistically significant. So how can we calculate these probability values in SPSS? I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to use one adjusted standardized residual. To calculate all of them, you just need to copy each adjusted standardized residual over to a new variable. But again, I'm just going to use this one value. So I'm going to go up to the formula bar and press Control C and copy that and move back to the data editor. I'm just going to use the same data editor that contains the data from the chi-square for this example. And I'm going to create a new variable just by hitting Control V. And next, I'm going to go to Transform and compute variable. And the name of the variable is going to be p-value. For the numeric expression, I'm going to go to the function group and move down to significance and select the first function, which is sig.chisq. This requires two arguments, quantity and the degrees of freedom. So for the quantity, it's going to be the new variable I created squared, just as I did in Excel. So to square this new variable, I'm going to use this key on the bottom left of the number pad. It has two asterisks, and that will raise this variable to its power, and that power is going to be 2. So I'm going to square it. Then for the degrees of freedom, it's going to be 1 degree of freedom, just as I did in Excel. Then I'll click OK to create this new variable, move back to the data editor. 
I want to change the number of digits to the right of the decimal that are displayed. I'm going to go to Variable View and to P-Value, Decimals. I'm going to move this to 5 decimals. Go back to the Data View. You can see the P-Value 0 0.002, the same result we had with Excel. And again, if you wanted to convert all nine of those p-values, you would copy all the adjusted standard residuals into this new variable and use the same transform compute variable. And it will calculate all nine p-values at the same time. I hope you found this video on conducting a post hoc test after a chi-square test to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.